The Moto G has always been Motorola's most popular line of smartphones, and it's pretty obvious to see why. The recent Moto G5 Plus offered a really nice hardware experience and a very simplistic software experience at a pretty affordable price, but Motorola definitely thought they could do better. I'm David Amell with Android Authority, and this is the review of the Moto G5S Plus. If you compared the Moto G5S Plus to a lot of other options on the market right now, you probably wouldn't realize it was a budget phone. Its unibody aluminum shell and chamfered edges give it a really luxurious look, and it is actually pretty reminiscent of the OnePlus 5. The distinguishing factor here is the camera bump and signature badge on the back, reminding you that this is really a Motorola-made product. Now, Motorola never really said exactly what the S stands for, but I like to think it stands for sport. The G5S Plus feels a lot more refined than the previous iteration of the Moto G, right down to the clickiness of the buttons and the divot in that signature Motorola logo. I like to think that this phone is a lot like a Kia Optima. It's great to use and is fun as a daily driver, but you're not going to impress anyone with that branding. This isn't a Porsche design, after all. While the body shape is actually really similar to the G5 Plus, Motorola shifted the headphone jack to the top to make room for bottom firing speakers in the bottom of the device. These speakers sound okay. They're really nothing special and they definitely lack bass, but they get the job done and they do get pretty loud. Right next to the speakers on the bottom of the device, you're gonna find a micro USB port. While I'll always advocate for USB Type-C in 2017, Motorola is including their fast charge technology in this phone, which should get you about six hours and 15 minutes of charging. Speaking of power, this phone is rocking a 3000 milliamp hour battery, which is more than a lot of flagships can sport these days. Because Motorola is using a 1080p display in this phone, it lasts a really long time. I took my phone off the charger Sunday morning and it only died on Monday night right when I got home from work. That's two full days, which equated to about four hours and 45 minutes of screen on time. Pretty impressive. Since I just mentioned the screen, let's talk about it again. It's a 5.5 inch 1080p LCD panel and it looks just fine. 401 PPI was honestly just fine for everyday use and everything but the lowest brightening setting was clearly visible outside. I think 5.5 inches is a great compromise between the usability and media experience, so I'm really glad Motorola bumped it up from the 5.2 inch screen in the Moto G5 Plus. There's a fingerprint reader sitting right below that screen, and it is fast, like really fast. While I love the fact that I was able to wake my phone from sleep pretty much instantly, it also means that it activated a lot. Sometimes I would just be sitting in my pocket, and if I put my hands in there for any reason, it would activate and think that I was trying to unlock it. This got annoying pretty quickly, and I'm really hoping that Motorola fixes this feature once they eventually update this phone to Android 8.0 Oreo. Like I mentioned earlier, the Moto G5S Plus is sporting that classic Motorola camera bump. While it's essentially the exact same size as the one in the G5 Plus, Motorola was actually able to stuff two camera sensors in there. I'm really glad they were able to do this because I'm really not a fan of the whole dual camera aesthetic that's on most flagships today. And while it's nice having two cameras in your phone, the quality of said cameras is another story. While a lot of these dual cameras give you the ability to do 2x optical zoom and wide angle shots, Motorola only really reserves this for a depth of field effect. And while that's a cool effect to have, it's pretty bad. Even in great lighting, the depth of field effect looks pretty fake, and it really doesn't even look as good as something shot out of the OnePlus 5. The regular camera is also pretty so-so, even at 13 megapixels. It looks pretty washed out, and even in decent lighting, you're gonna get some muddy soft images. It's pretty sad to see a phone so obviously focused on the dual cameras deliver such a subpar experience, but that's one of the things you have to sacrifice when you make a budget smartphone. Oh, right, this is a budget smartphone. You're getting a pretty nice body for just over $200, but what's packed inside? The Moto G5S Plus is sporting a Qualcomm Snapdragon 625 processor, 3 to 4 gigabytes of RAM, and 32 to 64 gigabytes of internal storage, depending on the model you get. Yeah, it's not Qualcomm's latest Snapdragon 835 chip, but it runs this version of Android really well, and I hardly ever saw any skipping or stuttering. Oh yeah, speaking of Moto's version of Android, it's actually one of the best in the business. It's pretty near stock with just a few tweaks, but these tweaks are actually really useful. Moto Display and Moto Actions are the main changes that Motorola added to this phone, and they allow you to do things like interact with notifications while the screen is off, double chop to get the flashlight, or twist to open the camera. There are quite a few more actions baked into Motorola's software, but it would probably double the length of this video to talk about all of them. So that's the Moto G5S Plus. 
At $229, you're gonna have a hard time finding anything quite this good, and if you've been searching for the best experience on Android, this is definitely a top contender. If you like this review, make sure you head over to our website where you can read the full in-depth article. And if you wanna see everything from Motorola and beyond, make sure you stay tuned to Android Authority, because of course, we are your source for all things Android.